Hello, from LPL Financial, welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. This is Quincy Crosby. It is Monday morning, August 8th, and this is The Talking Point. And thank you for joining me. It is pre-market, and we are looking at an extremely important week for the market. First of all, let me go over Friday's surprise, major surprise payroll report. We were expecting approximately 250,000 new jobs. That was the consensus estimate. And what happened? We had over 525,000 new jobs. Unbelievable. No one expected this at all. A major surprise. Also, in that report, we saw wages climbing higher. This is not something the Fed wanted to see because the Fed is looking to dampen consumer spending in order to push down inflation. And what do they get? They get a report of an extremely strong consumer because remember, the labor market is the major pillar for the US economy. Why? Because 70% of the consumer spending is the GDP, right? And so you're not going to have a strong GDP if consumers don't have a job and wages moving higher. So the Fed's goal of, of damping down consumer activity in order to bring down prices actually is turned on its head with that report from Friday. Not only that, we had revisions upward from previous reports. So this is the report that I think does solidify the notion that the U.S. is not in a recession. So it's going to be interesting to hear what the Federal Reserve has to say about that, what they expect to do. So far, we've heard from one of the uh, Fed board members who said, you know, I think we have to go with a stronger move at the September meeting, meaning 75 basis points. So what happened is that when this report came out, Suddenly, the Fed Fund's futures market moved from 50 basis points at the September meeting to 75 basis points, telling us that the Fed needs to raise rates more and a bit more hawkish. This week, though, we are going to have the data release from the Consumer Price Index. This will come on Wednesday, and it is obviously for July's report, the data of the consumer prices. This is going to be extremely important for the market and obviously for the Fed. If the consumer price index reports this month and next month come back showing that inflation is moving in the right direction, down in a, in a more decisive way, then the Fed can actually perhaps go back to 50 basis points. We'll see what the Fed has to say, because they have said, we're not going to telegraph this time. We are going to be data dependent. And we will decide, you know, moving in to the September meeting. There is a talk now if the Fed sees that inflation is moving in the wrong direction, in other words, moving higher, that the Fed could perhaps move rates higher in between meetings. They don't like to do that. The Fed doesn't mind surprising to the upside, meaning cutting rates uh, in between meetings if they have to, but they don't like to raise rates in between meetings. We will see, we'll hear what the, you know, what the Fed speakers have to say. But the point is this week, we will get a picture of inflation. The good news, here's some good news about inflation. We expect to see that the headline inflation numbers, meaning food and energy, may start to ease, meaning level off. Gasoline prices are down, although natural gas prices actually are steadfastly higher. Food prices are starting to come down, although I have to say personally, I haven't seen it, but I see the data. I see the commodity data. Grain prices are down, corn, wheat prices are coming down. So perhaps we see an easing in the headline inflation. And we know gasoline prices are coming down, which is good news for the U.S. consumer. In the core is what the Fed does look at. Rent. Rent has a stronger role, I should say, within the core uh, uh, complex of inflation data. And what we're seeing across the U.S., there are pockets of of good news in that rents have leveled off across the U.S., but it's not complete. Obviously, it's a very large country, and we won't know, I think, 
for a couple of months as to whether or not this is a trend across the country, that rents are coming down across the board. But we'll get a good picture of inflation in this report. And then on Thursday, we are going to have the U.S. Producer Price Index. This is important. The PPI, as the Producer Price Index is known, gives us a picture of input costs. What are companies paying for um, for the you know, the goods and services that they need for production, because you know what, they want to pass that along. And they will try to pass it along, especially if they can. Uh, And uh, we know that producer prices are climbing. We're getting that from the ISM numbers, the Institute for Supply Management numbers. They're coming down. That's good news, but they are still elevated. So we'll get a good picture for that. So this is important because if these numbers are showing that inflation is coming down and coming down decidedly, we may actually see that expectations for the September meeting at the Fed suddenly revert back to 50 basis points. So it's going to be interesting. Also, the U.S. dollar may actually pull back a bit if it shows that inflation is indeed coming down and that the Fed does not have to be as aggressive because what we have seen is the dollar started to inch up again after Friday's report because the market is saying, well, the Fed is going to have to be aggressive, more aggressive than what we saw from the Bank of England, which only had a 50 basis point hike, and from the European Central Bank, which earlier uh, had a 50 basis point hike. So a a lot is at play right now. Also uh, this week, what we do have is the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey on Friday. And this is important. We want to hear what the U.S. consumer has to say. And we know consumers have been fairly miserable. But embedded in that report is how do U.S. consumers see inflation out five years? And it pulled back to below 3%. It came back uh, rather quickly. So what we don't want to see is that they're saying, oh, no, 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 we see inflation climbing higher now. That is the wrong direction. And anything that's the wrong direction means that the Fed has to be more aggressive in its rhetoric leading up to the September meeting and telling the market, "Uh uh-uh, Don't think that the Fed is going to be uh, easy. And by the way, following the Federal Reserve meeting that we had July 26th and 27th, where Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, had a press conference on July 27th, and the market's translation of what he said was actually less hawkish. Uh, The market was kind of, I, I think, you know, surprised at how, how, dovish he was. That There were those who said he was dovish. There were those who said he was less hawkish. But that's what led to the market believing that the next rate hike would be 50 basis points rather than 75 basis points. However, and this is important, following the meeting, we have had Fed speakers coming out in a seemingly orchestrated manner, telling us, uh uh-uh, you know, you, you kind of did not interpret Powell's remarks correctly. The Fed has more work to do. So again, the Fed is data dependent, but so is the market. And this week, important inflation-related data for the market. Also, I do want to report that last week, the Institute for Supply Management, which is the purchasing manager's reports, and they are very important for the market. What we saw was that in terms of the service sector, which is obviously the largest portion of the U.S. economy, with manufacturing only being between 9 and maybe 11 percent, actually climbed higher. The headline number climbed higher. Remember, on these reports, 50 is the line of demarcation between expansion and contraction. And what we saw was good news, that we saw expansion in the service sector. In the manufacturing sector, we saw it pull back down, down. not not below 50, but certainly moved downward uh, and inching lower. But service sectors, the largest portion of the U.S. economy, moving higher. So this week, in terms of earnings, this is what I'm looking for. Today, on Monday, I'm looking at uh, some of the biotech uh, reports, uh, very important, and also Tyson Foods. 
very important because we know we want to hear our food prices coming down. What do they see happening in terms of food costs? And so it would be extremely highly followed and important. And then on Tuesday, I am looking at um, a couple of the hotels. I'm looking at Hyatt, for example, but also Wynn Resorts, because we want to hear how the consumer is spending. And we also want to hear, are they seeing foreigners coming to the U.S. spending here in, in, in this country? And then on Wednesday, a uh, very important that I'm looking at and the market is, is Disney. And why is Disney so important for the market? It's because Disney is the uh, proverbial bellwether for the consumer. And Disney encompasses, one, the parks, right? Not just parks in the United States, but in China, in France, in Singapore. What are we seeing in terms of consumer spending in those parks. Also, in terms of sp streaming, we know how important Disney is in the streaming world, and not to mention their cruises. And so this gives us, a, I think, a very important uh, overall look at the consumer. And again, not just in the U.S., but outside of the U.S. So the market will be paying very close attention to what Disney has to say in their earnings report. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to have uh, a number of companies, uh, uh, you know, Utz Brands, which, by the way, is uh, pretzels and potato chips. They went public, I think it was a year ago now. We want to hear what they have to say. Maybe it was two years ago now. It's hard to remember when you had, an, um, how shall I say, the, uh, the, the period of the uh, COVID uh, lockdowns. And then on Friday, again, we're going to have that University of Michigan report. So overall, this is an extremely important week for earnings still. Uh, and I want to also sum up that the earnings reports have surprised to the upside. The beat rate, while it has come down from you know previous reports, it's still high, meaning that companies are beating their estimates. And this is good news. They are also beating uh, in terms of earnings per share. Yes, it has come down, but it's still good. And in terms of margins, remember why margins are so important, operating margins. It means this, this is what they're actually earning. This is what's moving down to the bottom line. And yes, it has been coming down, but nothing that is drastic, which is how we came into the earnings season with really drastic and pessimistic um, projections. Now, this doesn't mean, by the way, that as we go ahead into the uh, end of the year that we don't see as earnings estimates pulling back again. We are seeing that. But the question is, Again, what does the Fed do? Because what the market does not want is the Fed's actions to pull us into a recession. To repeat, the labor report that we had was underpinning the notion, no recession, because the labor market is pivotal for the overall economy, for the U.S. consumer. So Again, a busy week for the market, and we'll be paying attention to what Federal Reserve speakers have to say and what they see looking ahead. So far, they have been saying there's more work to be done, and that is being translated as hawkish. That could change after the Consumer Price Index report comes out this week. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate your listening. Don't hesitate to get in touch. I will get back to you. Take care and have a very good and safe week. Thank you so much. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and 
advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of the LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations and may lose value.